What's up guys, I'm just gonna do a video before the weekend, eh, maybe a couple videos because I still have to cover the markets, but this one will be about how do you get someone to do what you want them to do without being forceful. Um, basically, we're seeing what has happened with the migrants and with the Democrats. Uh, they are actually living out the Bible, which is the Adam and Eve story. Let's look at what happened with God, okay? God represents truth and justice, right? And love and all things good, right? He creates these people. <coughs> he puts them in a paradise. <coughs> he creates this paradise too. To me, this is America, right? It's this paradise. It's this people that has been created uh, by a group of people who founded this country and gave it a constitution that gave it rules and laws. And those, thing, those rules and laws keep the people in order and it keeps them protected from majorities that would like to overcome and overpower them. Uh, you know, the popular vote, we like to say. And uh, the, what, what happens, there's this serpent that comes along and he whispers, ah, this, this person, this, this, this being that created these rules, this person's lying to you, they're a liar. They're, uh, they're discriminating against you. They don't want you to be as smart as they are. So uh, you don't follow those rules, right? And so what happens? They, the, the, the serpent gets these people to migrate into an area they're not supposed to be. There's been rules set and boundaries set so that they're not supposed to be there. They're not supposed to eat the fruit of this tree because it's been warned that they're not supposed to do that. They've been told not to do that. And yet they cross these borders and they consume this fruit. And what happens? The rest of their lives is spent in disaster now. They've been cast out from that city, that great garden, and their children are forced to fight each other and be in despair. When all they had to do was follow the laws, if they had followed the rules from the beginning, they would have continued to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Now, why would God allow something like that in biblical story, right? Uh, let's say it's just a story. Uh, why would a God, an all-powerful, all-knowing being, allow someone to come in and undermine that power? Uh, and, I, and I say allow because he's all-powerful, right? So he had to have allowed it. If he didn't allow it, then that means that God is not all-powerful and all-knowing, right? So I'm going to assume that God is all-powerful and all-knowing. What's the best thing for him to do? What's the best way to teach somebody a lesson? It's to let them experience it, right? As a parent, you learn that your children start to get intelligent over time. My son is not yet three, but he's starting to, he's very, very intelligent. And he's learned that he can do things. He doesn't necessarily have to follow what I tell him. He can go do things that he wants to do. I'll tell him, don't jump on the bed. Don't jump on the bed because you can lose your balance. You can fall and hit your head, right? There's a whole song about it that I play for him too. Five little monkeys jumping on a bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And then what do you hear? There are four monkeys jumping on the bed because the fifth one fell and bumped his head. So the, that one's off the bed. But the other four are still going to do it, even though they, they didn't learn the lesson themselves. But one learned the lesson. That one had to fall off the bed and hit his head. And that's just the he. There are she's, there are others. Okay, I'm not discriminating. <laughs> there are he's and she's that both fall off the bed and bump their head and learn their lesson. Well, that happened to my son. My son, I told him not to jump on the bed. Even after watching that, that song and everything, I was like, don't, don't jump on the bed. You're going to fall and bump your head. He just smiles and keeps jumping. He smiles at me, taunts me, almost like this Honduran caravan. They come up to the border. They get to the fence. And what do they do? They're, they're squeezing through. They're flipping off the border patrol and the, and the National Guard, any military personnel that are there. They're cussing them out saying, F you. Look at us. We can do this. There's razor wire, concertina wire, as they call it, 
And what are they doing? They're grabbing it and they're shaking it to, to taunt us Americans in the land of paradise to show us that they can go where they're not supposed to go without following the rules, right? My, my son did that same thing, jumping on the bed, smiling. And what happened? He lost his balance. And fortunately, my bed is close to the ground, but there is a, there is a cabinet near the bed where he fell off, rolled on the floor, and he bumped his head on the cabinet. And then he grabbed the back of his head and started crying and looked at me. And what do I say? I told you. I told you. Do I spank him? No. The best spanking he got was by experience. Now, as a parent, do I feel bad? Absolutely. I feel horrible that my son got hurt. Uh, but yet, there's this voice inside that tells people that, you know, you don't care when you don't do anything. And I'm sure there are people watching this video going, how could you let your son fall? Why didn't you just stop him? No, the best way to teach someone is by experience. The, and I've said in past videos, the best way to defeat leftism and socialism and the Democrats is to let them get away with everything they want to do. Let the people who are brainwashed by them and so blindly support Democrats and communism and socialism, let them see the fruits of their labor. This is another scriptural saying, right? You shall know them by their fruits. Well, if you stop them from doing the things they're doing, you'll never get to see the fruits, right? If you stop a tree from producing its fruit, you don't get to taste it. You don't get to see it. There are some fruits you don't want to taste. Let the tree produce that fruit so you can actually see the fruit. You can actually take it from the tree and bite it, right? Let these people produce the fruit they're not supposed to. And let them eat it. And they can continue to claim Venezuela is not true communism. It's not true socialism. It wasn't done right. So it's not true communism. So, you know, when is communism and social, socialism ever done right? It's not. It's a failure. That's why it fails everywhere. And you dummies keep seeing it. Keep seeing it. And the newborns, the new kids that come on the block, they're born into this world without knowing history or studying it. Or they go to a school where the teachers are all leftist and they teach them that communism and all this stuff, this socialism is good because you give people stuff for free that they're not supposed to have other, while other people work for it. Tell me where that makes sense, right? Tell me where you've worked for something and you like to give it away. There's a point at which charity runs out where you just keep giving and giving and giving and you're not getting any benefit from it. You start to go, you know what? I'm done giving you because it's hurting me. That's where the charity runs out. That's where socialism runs out. It's all good until you run out of other people's money. As uh, Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady said, socialism works till you run out of people's money. And communism is a form of socialism. If you don't believe me, look at the USSR, the old Russia, the Soviet Socialist Republic, right? The Un Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. That's history. That's something that the fake news media, the leftist Democrats that can talk a good one, cannot cover. They cannot hide. If you go on Google, Google cannot erase that history. Look up what USSR stands for, the communist country of USSR, the Federation of USSR, the Union of USSR. It was all so socialist. And look at the Nazis who fought them. They were socialist, nationalist socialists of Germany, their Workers' Party of Germany. So socialism does not work, but the new kids don't know that unless they're taught that. And they go and they follow it. So the best way to teach them is to let them follow it. Let them have it pass and let them see and eat the fruits of their labor. Let them eat their words because they like to label us racist. They like to be like the devil and whisper, oh, they're liars, they're racists, they're xenophobes. You know, and what can you say against that? Once you're labeled bad, you think anyone's going to listen to you? I say, look at the history of the Democratic Party, the whisperers who keep calling us racists. They're the ones who started the KKK. And now they're whispering, oh, no, there was a switch. The racists went to the Republican Party. No, look at history. Look at the policies of the KKK. They took guns away from the slaves because they don't want the slaves to revolt against the masters who are oppressing them. 
they fraudulently voted and they prevented fra the, the black people, the slaves, from voting, right? They made it difficult to voice their opinions. They disenfranchised the voters. Guess what the Democrats are doing today? They're letting you vote, but then what are they doing? They're recounting. They're trying to give more time, and they're going to give rights to these people who don't belong to this country so that they can keep the Democrats in power, so they can keep enslaving you. They keep taking your guns away. That's number one. Look, after midterms, there was a shooting right away. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. I think the Democrats set that up. They set it up for someone to go shoot. Because it's just coincidental that it's always after an election. It's always uh, at a time when they really want to take guns. They talk about taking guns. And then they introduce legislation soon after to take guns. They just introduced this new uh, uh, anti-3D printing uh, uh, bill, which basically makes every part that you put in an AR, which stands for Armalite, not assault rifle. There's no such thing as an assault rifle. It bans every part that goes into a firearm to make it a firearm. Unbelievable how they can generalize things like that. They, they, they stereotype firearms just the same way they stereotype people, and then they label them, label, label, label. The Democratic Party is still a party of the KKK. The thinking is the same. Generalize people, mar marginalize people, label people, steal their rights, disenfranchise their voting. Uh, just like the globalists, look at what's going on in, in uh, UK with Brexit. That's fallen apart. Here the people voted overwhelmingly to separate from the European Union. And what does the European Union do? They get this person in that's a puppet that's like, oh yeah, I'm going to help you with Brexit. And what do they do? Nothing. Theresa May does nothing to the point where her party is disbanding. They're dissolving. And the Brexit movement is dissolving. And the people are getting screwed. They allow illegal immigrants there. Again, who started that? The illegal immigrants there? They were refugees from Syria. Who started the war in Syria? The Democrats, President Obama. We have to have regime change. Assad must go. Um, you have uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, we came, we saw, he died. Ha, 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 ha. They were doing regime change all throughout the Middle East, creating refugees out of stable countries. They were bombing in those countries and destabilizing them and causing revolutions so that the people ended up fleeing as refugees. And then they were moving and migrating illegally into Europe, throughout Europe, raping people, overthrowing their economies. And now look, France is a mess. Italy is about to go bankrupt. Spain is a mess, it's in debt, it's bankrupt. This is all socialism. The European Union, that word union again, is the same as the Soviet Union. That word union again. And though the United States is a form of a union, it doesn't say the union of the Republic, Republican States of America. No, it doesn't say that, it's the United. We did not form a union. We united under nationalism, this love of freedom and under freedom and liberty, this concept of individual rights, individualism, not communism, freedom. And a lot of these people are starting to see it in Mexico too. We welcome Mexico because well, Mexico is starting to realize these, these migrants are messing up their country. They're messing up their economy. They're messing up the stability of their nation. So a lot of the states are not even allowing the new caravans to come through because it's a never-ending process with communism. It's a constant flow. Once one shows they can do it, the rest all do it because they all want benefits for free. The states in Mexico are starting to see people are coming in there and they offer them work. They don't want to work. They just want the benefits. That's what they're coming here to the United States for. They're thieves. They just want the benefits. A thief steals for the benefit of your stuff. And they don't work for the benefit of your stuff. I had someone break into my, uh, break into my house and steal $60,000 worth of stuff that I was, I, I collected stuff, I had comic books. The thing that hurts me the most is Stan Lee just passed away and I was looking at some of the comic books that I owned where he signed them along with some of my Todd McFarlane signed comic books that were stolen. And many of those comic books are averaging $2,000 a comic book and I had mint condition comic books. The thieves stole from me 
They acquired those valuable comic books for free. And let me guess, did they sell them for that value? I bet you nah. I bet you they got rid of them for like a hundred bucks, 30 bucks, 20 bucks, just to get a fix on some drugs that they can take and get high. They absolutely disrespected, that's the part that hurts me the most. They disrespected the, the artwork, the items that I collected, the value of them for the fact that they just could get it for free. And that's what's gonna happen when they get into America. They'll just dis disrespect the value of the benefits and the freedom that we have and they'll just trash it and they'll, they'll throw it out the window. So do you value freedom? Why would you vote Democrat ever? Because they're about slavery. They're about disrespecting individual rights and freedom and independence. Even in a commune, when you're part of a communist group, you won't realize how much they hate you until you just disagree. You have no freedom. You must conform to the communist view or you're done. Now, there's more that I, I want to cover in it, but I'm going over my break by one minute at my work and I have to get back to work. So uh, if you like my stuff, uh, please like, subscribe, hit the smash that, that, that button, that bell, or the notification button on, on the YouTube channel if you, so, so you get notifications when I put videos out. And please, please share my videos so other people can uh, get a chance to be exposed to my views, even if they don't agree with it, because that's the beauty of freedom of speech. You expose people to stuff even if they don't agree with it, because you never know. One day, it might change their mind. And communists that talk about fascism and they want to ban everybody talking against them, they just want you to hear their part, I should let you know. They are not thinking right. Freedom of speech is important because ideas are important. And that's true progress. That's true moving forward. If you're about progress and moving forward, you will keep freedom of speech alive so that you can expand your mind, expose your mind to new ideas. So uh, the thing I wanted to talk about, which I might cover in another video, or I just leave it up to you, is they've found tanks in Mexico with red stars on them. And they have a new communist president coming in. So you go figure what's going on there. Why would they need star tanks that look like they are Chinese or Russian? Uh, why would they need communist tanks there? Something's going on in Mexico. Mexicans better wake up. The nationalists better wake up. Why would they allow the caravan to pass through without going through a legal process? Why would they offer them uh, uh, respite or stay and benefits. Think about those things. This is globalism. It's actually communism in disguise. So nationalism is good. It's self-reliance. It's freedom. It's true love for the individual. And that includes individuals other than yourself. Communism destroys individuals. It destroys minorities. The individual is the minority. If you're about communism and about minorities, you are an oxymoron. You contradict yourself. You should be confused. Individualism is true freedom. All right, go ahead. Like, subscribe, and share. And I thank you for your support. Take care.